as I verged over into my 30s, I recently asked myself, what kind of games did I really enjoy when I was a young lad? In this video, I look back at some of the memories I have of those times and show you 10 of my favourite games as I was growing up. Some of them are well known, and others, well, not so much. Enough of the idle chit chat, let's get on with it. First up, we have Unreal Tournament. In 1999, I was still using a 56k modem and getting cut off every two hours and having to reconnect because NTL liked to be dicks to their customers. My first real online game from my memory was, well, this one. I stayed up late most nights in the early hours of the morning playing this game on a USA based server, of all things, along the names of Mutant Killer or something along those lines at least. Um, the owner of that server actually ran the admin page.com which back then was based around the game and had a ton of admin tools on it. The game itself was my first being a PC shooter and I loved every single minute of it. Uh, this led me to creating my own clan and recruiting players who I forged friendship with over time and some to this day I still remain in contact with. At one point, we were a dominant force within the US-based UT scene, and I always look fondly back on those days. Even though the game has had a few sequels, and online play is pretty much dead now, apart from a few random servers which don't really work, nothing has ever compared to the charm that oozed from UT99. It's a game that made me really establish online friendships, and my love for shooters since that day has only grown and grown. I mean, these days I throw hours upon hours into Overwatch instead, and with the deathmatch mode now recently thrown into Overwatch, it really does feel like hope to me. At number 2, we have a game that made me care maybe too much about my actual forces, and jewels and jobs will forever be cemented in my brain because of it. Cannon fodder, and to a slightly lesser extent Cannon fodder 2. I was maybe 10 or 11 when I first played this game on my Amiga 1200. I remember it well as we went to an outdoor market on a Monday in Polesworth, in Tamworth. Every bank holiday Monday you would know that you were heading to this huge outdoor market, being dragged along by your parents and complaining about a quarter of the way through it that your legs were hurting you. We picked up a few games that day from a market stall selling Amiga games. Cannon Fodder was one of those games, and as soon as I got home, I was completely hooked by it. Before the days of XCOM, where you felt emotionally attached to soldiers, and if they died, you reloaded the save, I had Cannon Fodder. Now, I mentioned Jaws and Jops at the start of this entry. Those were the first two soldiers you were always given in Cannon Fodder, and every time they died, well, eh, it made me a bit sad. Excellent game that spawned a sequel, and many years later, to which I was completely oblivious of until I was writing all this up, there was actually a third game released in 2012, and, well, I might have to look that one up too now. The late 90s were completely filled with great games. So much so, a top 10 list really was difficult to make up um, from about 50 that I could have mentioned. In 1997, Bullfrog was still a dominant force for British gaming. They gave us so much, and for me, so many memories. While Theme Park was brilliant, something about Theme Hospital always intrigued me more. From its wacky humour to its damn natural disasters. I love this game so damn much. I still have the original disc laying about in a CD wallet. And that's the same said for all the games on this list now that I come to think about it. Running a hospital in a semi-serious way has never been so much fun, and to my knowledge never been repeated for some reason. Yeah, we had Hospital Tycoon, but that wasn't anywhere near as good as this game. Not even close. Replaying this game these days, as I am much older than when I first got my hands onto it, it's still very much a fun game. Although I do wish we could turn off the damn earthquakes. They still annoy me all these years on. I do wish they would give us another one. We deserve another game by now. Then again, with how EA abuses and really boggers up on the old Bullfrog IPs, maybe it's better they leave this one well alone. Syndicate was redone and they completely cocked that up. And they even did Dungeon Keeper on mobile. That went down well, didn't it? Speaking of which, number four, I have the famous Dungeon Keeper. This game always will have a special place in my heart. 
and I still play the campaign through maybe once a year despite it being the same every year. I just can't help myself. The very innovator, at least to my knowledge, of being able to play the bad guys instead of the good guys is still brilliant. Building dungeons, as completely insane as I felt like, armed with traps and magic doors, not much else caught my attention in 1997 when this wonderful piece of history was thrown at me by my parents. This game still plays wonderfully even today, thanks to support by a fan-made mod which goes to the name of Keeper FX. And I will throw a link to that in the description. It fixes pretty much all the issues the game had running on modern systems. And to play using this mod, you will need the original game files. Yes, I have them, thanks to my DK Gold CD. You can also buy the game on GOG.com and use those files. Anyway, I simply love this game. I also love DK2 as well, but it never really got the same feel to it as the first game. I was delighted when I heard that two games were coming nearly 20 years later on, those being War for the Overworld and Dungeons 2. Both borrow heavily from the Dungeon Keeper series, War for the Overworld honestly doing it better than Dungeons 2 in my opinion. Dungeon Keeper will always remain one of my games I have to go back to. We'll pretend EA didn't bastardise the franchise with that mobile version. It never happened. On to number 5. And for this entry, I decided to pick something a little bit different and quite a lot older. This is Bomb Jack. I was a tiny wee bugger when I first played this game. I think it was on the old Amstrad CPC. My brother and I would head round to our uncle's place and he had this tape playing games machine and we would spend what would seem bloody hours upon hours playing great old classics such as Dizzy's Fast Food or Bulldog or as we used to call it Bomb the Ship. Now replaying this today I completely suck at it. It's weird how we get older and games seem to get harder and harder the more they age. I mean Super Mario Brothers on the old Nintendo. I know I used to rock through that game when I was a kid with no problem. Play it now on the 3DS and I suck at it. The same applies to Bomb Jack. I remember being good at it when I was a kid. Now as you can see from this footage, I suck at it. I really, really suck at it. Either way, it was one of the first experiences I had with video games and I always can look back on this one and think this is where it all began. Ah, nostalgia. Now at number 6 we have... Civilization 2. Now, I wasn't sure if I should suggest the first game or the second game here, but in the end, I opted for Civ 2. It was more influential to me than the first one. In 1996, this wonder of the world graced our home computer systems, and I burned hours and hours away on this one. One of my first games for our, well, what was great at the time, Fujitsu PC, which my parents got for us from Toys R Us. I had this game, my brother had Doom 2. The game still runs beautifully, even today. Um, however, sadly, the advisors seem pretty dead. I can't seem to get them to work these days, no matter what I do. In fact, every video in the game seems to be completely broken due to an outdated and no longer supported codec. The popular term associated with Civ, which is One More Turn, really had me with this game. I couldn't just save and come back. Well, I could, um, but my brain always decided against that notion. Sadly, Civ games these days have become a lot more complicated, with mechanics that seem to break the system. While Civ 6 is still a great game, it had a patch in the summer which broke the game. It broke that game a lot. Thankfully, Civ 2 is still great, and Gandhi still wants to drop a nuke on me just because he can. At number 7 is the reason I don't trust myself to drive. It seems all my favourite titles came from 1997, the more I look on this list. Carmageddon rewarded drivers for, well, killing people and causing as much damage as possible to everyone else, borrowing heavily from the film Death Race 2000. I'm unsure why I love this game so much, which sounds a bit weird. I never had an interest in cars or racing games in general, until I watched one of my uncles play this one and I simply had to follow suit. My personal method of winning a stage in this game wasn't just striding about, no, that's too boring. It was to wreck all the other cars in the race by any means possible. The game was covered in controversy back in the release of it. Many changes had to be made before it was allowed to be even released, such as all blood and gore removed before it could be sold to the general public. Thankfully, nearly a year after that, 
the game was re-released in all its bloody gory detail. The game had a few sequels, Carmageddon 2 was released over a year later, and was the best excuse for me to ask my parents for my first ever 3D FX card for my birthday. Rest in peace my old faithful Voodoo 2. We also got TDR 2000 a couple of years after that. Not going to lie, um, that game was complete and utter crap. However, there is some good news after all that. 18 years after the first game, we got Carmageddon Reincarnation, also known as Carmageddon Max Damage to the console players. It took all the best bits of the first two games, threw them in a blender, and gave us a fantastic game. I love that Stainless got their actual property back. However, they are dicks for still not honouring the $150 plus pledges from the Kickstarter campaign. But that story is for another day. Now at number 8, we have The Settlers. Back in 1993, Blue Byte, a German developer, gave us this wonderful little game which spawned so many sequels. The Settlers were something I played heavily instead of doing what most kids do, which is sleeping. I didn't do much of that when I got this game. If I did fall asleep, it would be me face down on a keyboard. Such good memories. Managing a city somehow became addictive as hell with this game. And the worst part is, the game was slow paced. And I mean slow. You could be waiting 20 minutes for a building to be constructed. But back then, I didn't care. This game had never been done before. It was revolutionary in that regard. As much as I love Settlers 2, I never played it like I did the first one. If I look back, I wonder what enthralled me so much. So I would sit there and watch my little workers carry wood along paths so much. Because honestly, playing this game now, it certainly lost its charm. Thankfully, Settlers 2 was revived back in 2006, and that runs beautifully, 10 years after its initial release. So for all my city building and management needs, I go to Settlers 2, the 10th anniversary edition. Sadly, by Settlers 3, my interest in the franchise died. And I can tell you why. It's easy to tell you why, actually. They took my roads away. Roads in Settlers 3 were gone, and with it, so was my love for the franchise. How dare you, Blue Bite. How dare you! Now, at number 9, I have what is quite possibly the first RTS I played. And you know what? I'll say it. It's the damn originator of the entire RTS genre. June 2 was the first RTS. Argue with me on that one if you like. I don't care. Before Command & Conquer, three years before, just so you CNC fanboys can kindly shut your face and be quiet, we had June 2 in 1992. Okay, so it wasn't the very first RTS ever made. That would be a bold statement. But it certainly laid down the groundwork for all the future popular RTS titles, like Command & Conquer and Warcraft. This game had it all. Great soundtracks, interesting mechanics, complexity, which was so damn difficult to master, and sandworms, which I would always greatly murder with my rocket troops because they kept eating my goddamn spice harvesters. One of my greatest memories of this game was from my childhood, in one of those later missions where you get the palace structure and therefore unlocked a super weapon. I was usually the Harkonnen because I'm evil and always preferred the baddies. Um, I had an entire army from one side of the map to the other in a single line. I took the save file to my uncle's on my little floppy diskette and loaded it up for him. He couldn't believe what I had done. Now. In modern RTS games, you just click and drag around all units, box them in, and go murder everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're not going to do that in June 2. You, you couldn't. There was no grouping. You had to select each unit one by one and tell them what you wanted them to do. Thankfully, six years later, we had June 2000, which was basically everything remastered into a spiffy new game, where I could click around and drag an entire army to stomp my enemies. Also, the soundtrack was remastered and it was the best soundtrack ever in the history of games ever. Um, I love Dune. I'm sad we haven't had any new games since Emperor Battle for Dune back in 2001. Please give us another Dune game. Unless it's Kickstarter based, um, then I won't bother. So, so far, I listed nine quite well known and popular games back there. I'm sure even if you never played some of them, you might have heard something of them before now. Maybe number 10 um, is a bit of a weird one. Meet Rick Dangerous. Back in 1989, possibly 1990 when I first got my hands on it, I played this game on my uncle's Amiga 500, 
My brother and I used to call it the WAG game because of the amusing sound the enemies made when you killed them. I don't remember if I was any good at this game when I was five or so. I guess I would have been terrible at it due to how many traps are laying around in the game. And you just don't know when they're going to crop up or where the hell they are. I do, however, remember my uncle using some kind of cheat, which meant I had unlimited lives. So, no matter how rubbish I was at the game, I could play over and over and eventually somehow clear the checkpoints in this game one by one. Amusing as it was, I can't find any record of the cheat in question out there on the internet either actually. If you know of it, I'd like to hear about it. This one falls under the same fate as Bomb Jack for me though. It seems the older I get, the worse I've gotten at this game. And there we have it. Top 10 games of my childhood. It's been a long, long road, but a fun one. Any other top lists you would like to see me do? Comments down there, let me know. Otherwise I might just crank out any old random lists when I can think of them. And well, we ain't sure where that will go really, are we? Top five types of sweeties when I was a nipper? Uh, let's hope not. Thanks for watching. See you again next time.